Okay, so you guys chose uh, cloud chasing. Not bad, not bad. All right, so I'm going to teach you guys how to do that. Uh, I realize that for many of you who are watching this, you probably don't even have anything to, you know, start making your own cloud machines yet. So why not go shopping together, right? So here we go. Okay, so if we look over here, uh, we need screwdrivers, okay? Now, the thing about these screwdrivers is that, like, uh, I'm showing you guys some stuff on Fast Tech. I'm not an advocator of fast tech or anything. In fact, I don't even really like these people that much. But the thing is that like stuff from them, you'll actually receive it and stuff from them is very cheap. So I'm not looking to break anybody's wallets. I'm trying to get everybody into, you know, dripping, cloud chasing, because that's what you want to learn. I'm trying to get you into it, you know, as a beginner for cheap, right? Okay, so this stuff, $3, okay, gets you a pack of uh, screwdrivers. It doesn't have to be these guys. You can find them, if you can find them at your local 99 cent store, by all means do so. Um, the reason why I recommend these is because a lot of pro builders that you're going to find on YouTube, okay, are always using these kinds of, uh, of, uh, of, I'm retarded, of these kinds of screwdrivers, okay? You see how it says, uh, this is a one, this is a zero, uh, 1.4 mm, 2.0, right? A lot of times they're, when they tell you, hey, we're going to be wrapping a micro coil, we're going to be doing this, we're going to be doing that, and we're going to use a zero, we're going to use the one, we're going to use the two millimeter, you know what I mean? This is exactly what they're talking about. So if you go ahead and get a set of these screwdrivers or whatever, you're going to have the exact same, you know, precision screwdrivers as the guy who's building it. So, you know, you guys are going to get the same stuff. Right. So it's important that you guys get some precision, precision screwdrivers, but, you know, it doesn't have to be expensive ones. All right, next. You need some kind of ohm resistance meter, okay? It doesn't matter which one you get, just go ahead and get one of these things, okay, you, it, that you could screw down an atomizer to. You don't have to get the expensive ones. You want to get the $10 one. I personally have a $10 one, whatever, okay? They kind of look like this. Just get yourself a cheap one um, because you need to know what is the resistance of what you built easily. And plus, these things are really good for holding your atomizer you know, in place as you work on them. So definitely recommend one of these for safety reasons as well as building reasons, okay? Uh, next one, butane torch. Butane torch, I mean, you don't have to get it from them. You could get it from your local, you know, from hobby stores to like, you know, uh, tobacco stores. Just go in there and I don't know, they're anywhere, anywhere between five to 10 bucks, I believe. And um, uh, for, for some people, for certain bills, you don't even actually need a torch. You could hold it over a gas stove, but definitely be careful when you do that because it's a gas stove. All right. Nail clippers. Nail clippers, I've mentioned in other videos, you definitely need to get a pair of these because they're accurate. They're just very accurate. They're very sharp and they're just, you know, easy to work with. Uh, you don't have to get it from Fast Tech. Again, you know, 99 cent store, whatever. But I really recommend the flathead large ones because, you know, it gets more stuff, it gets into more things. All right, uh, next thing, okay, before we get into this, I really need to uh, talk about the uh, mechanical device. For those of you out there who are hideously against clones and things like that, I really recommend uh, a Magneto. Okay, Magneto, you're going to see like a couple of them. The cheapest place to get a Magneto is actually from Fast Tech. So you might as well get your screwdrivers and everything else from here as well. Okay, uh, 3563 for the Smoke Tech Magneto currently right now. Okay, this one is an authentic one. You're going to get a real Magneto. It's the version 3. Only the version 3 has the floating telescopic. Uh, it, it's telescopic. It has the floating pin. It has uh, brass connections. You know, it, it's got everything correctly. Uh, the other Magnetos are knockoff and they're weird the the threading is not as good just get the authentic one okay uh, this is the only one that I recommend that is a real mechanical mod without going to a clone because this sure there's a lot of good mechanical mods out there uh, you know uh, Chi Yu nemesis things like that however I can't in good conscience recommend the real one to you guys because you know a lot of the clones is just as good and it's for like you know a fraction of the price so if you know, buying clones and stuff doesn't bother you, then go ahead. I mean, you know, you could get a uh, um, private V2, which is what I have uh, that, that I use every now and then. I think uh, this item looks kind of sleek. See what I'm saying? Uh, anyways, other than this, okay, your mechanical mod, you have to go get yourself uh, a dripping atomizer. Dripping atomizers are the easiest way to produce huge clouds, okay? Uh, one of them that, that, that I, I found over here, probably like the Patriot style. The Patriot style is a, is a large open deck. Uh, specifically, be careful when you purchase 
like, you know, the Patriot or an IGO W, IGO W4, IGO T, IGO W5, things like that. Uh, these are the cheaper dripping atomizers. Uh, specifically, this one is going to be a clone. Careful of how you buy this one. You see how the hole is next to the logo over here? It's on the side of it. That's how you know it's going to be, you know, uh, holes on the two sides of this thing, okay? You don't want to accidentally buy the ones with the single holes. You need the one with the dual holes because the dual holes allow you to do dual coils so that you have a hole for each coil and it's going to produce those large clouds, okay? So don't buy the wrong ones. So you could buy this one. Patriot, or you know, you could go ahead and then get an IGO W over here. Okay, so this one first IGO W, if you like this style a little bit better, okay, because you you know you don't want the gold one. So this one, see how the hole is on the side of this thing? You know you're going to get two holes. See on this one, one hole, two holes, six dollars and seventy-eight cents. Really cheap. I really recommend these things as your first dripping atomizers okay it won't break the wallet and you know you're gonna get those large uh, the, the, that, that large cloud production um, keep in mind that things like this require you to drill the holes out larger okay the only time you don't have to really drill out the holes larger is if let's say we already have a device that has adjustable airflow for instance uh, earlier I said I go M I go, um, I go M over here right I personally think is the hottest new thing. Okay, why? Because before, you know, the Omega and then the Zenith and things like that, they're all really, really high end drippers, right? But Ude is able to bring out stuff a lot cheaper. This thing is only $50. It has the same post as a Helios. So you could build, you know, single coil, quad coil, dual coil whatever very very easily and it has you know your adjustable airflow system on on the side and it's only for 50 bucks where an omega is going to charge you at least 80 bucks for nearly the same thing okay um, actually the inner workings of this thing I find to be more advanced than an omega so you know again I can't in good conscience recommend anything else other than this stuff because this is the stuff that like you know you really get what you pay for and you're not overspending on anything okay so <clears throat> uh, other than this let me see what else I want to talk about oh keep in mind okay that it doesn't have to be a dripper in order to blow huge clouds if you'd like you know I could show you how to do it with a Genesis for instance like a Kraken okay a Kraken over here just like you know uh, a Valkyrie or an Omega or other kinds of drippers if you stare at this over here it has an adjustable airflow system adjustable airflow systems allow us to adjust the airflow large enough so that we can go ahead and produce large clouds if we build the wick and coil you know accordingly so um, I'm going to, you know, just do a special mention of the Kraken Genesis style uh, atomizer. If you want to go ahead and get a clone, it's just as good as the, the original one. And uh, I will do a bonus video of how to do a auto drip setup with a, with a Kraken clone. Okay. Um, but for now, we'll just talk about how to do, you know, a basic dripper and how to, you know, uh, do the large holes and uh, uh, work with the Ohm's Law calculator, things like that. Okay. So now that you have your mechanical device and you have your dripper picked out, whether it's an IGO W, IGO T, IGO W4, you could get these at 101 Vape. Basically, any vape shop has them for anywhere around like, you know, 10 to $15 max. Sometimes you can even find it for five bucks if people are having a blowout sale. So it really depends. Now, other than this, you need wicks, right? So basic wicks and stuff, you just go on eBay and get it. If you're into silica, eco wool, the difference between eco wool and silica is that they're really the same thing, except eco wool is braided silica, while regular silica is just twisted together. What should you buy? You should buy uh, two millimeter, three millimeter, one point five. I think you should get a little bit of everything. Same thing with Canthal. You also get your Canthal on eBay as well. Just type in A1 Canthal and they're going to show you all sorts of stuff. Canthal in general, you should buy anywhere between like 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34. All right. Now, the reason why I recommend all sizes of Canthal, all sizes of eco wool, uh, silica, things like that is because 
you don't you guys aren't just going to be watching this show you're going to be watching other shows too and it's kind of like the food network you know you're going to watch different kind of builds different kinds of setups different kind of coils and basically it's all like different kinds of recipes and you're going to need different kinds of ingredients in order to complete that kind of recipe and achieve those kinds of results that you're seeing on video so definitely go ahead and uh, if you're going to be experimenting get a little bit of everything if you really don't want to, you know, you're really on a budget, then get like what is right in between. So for silica, I would probably just get like 1.5. And then for canthal, I would just get 28 gauge. It's right in between until I'm ready to buy a little bit thicker, a little bit uh, thinner, depending on, you know, what I'm trying to do. Right. OK. Other than this, you definitely need a battery to work with you know, your mechanical device, okay? Now, some of you might be asking me about like, hey, what about a kick? Okay, look, we're doing big clouds today, okay? And big clouds usually is talking about sub-ohm vaping. And sub-ohms uh, is not supported by a kick. So let's just leave the kick out of the picture for now, okay? We're all, uh, we're just gonna be talking about the mechanical device with uh, a badass battery. So what kind of battery should I get? Whatever you wanna get, okay? I'm not a specific fan of anything. I own a lot of stuff, but I'm not a specific fan of anything, okay? Uh, you want to get MNKEs because you like orange batteries, they look cool or whatever, by all means, go ahead and get them. Get anything with 30 amps. So they could be MNKEs, the Sony, the VTC4s, VTC3s, VTC5, they're all 30 amps. The new purple E-Fest ones, they're 30 amps as well. Or if you want to stay classic because, you know, you don't trust anybody and you know you've heard aw just go with straight aw because only aw holds the best yeah you know, whatever okay then by all means just get your aws and uh, right here whatever it is get your safe hydrain imr 30 amp as long as it's within 30 amps you can build all sorts of coils and it's going to be safe i'm going to do a video on uh, mechanical mod safety and it's going to be quick and painless and you guys are going to know exactly what I'm talking about as far as just buying these batteries. Just get this and then you don't really have to think about much, okay? Any 30 amp battery and we're good to go. So we've covered the battery, the silica, the wick. Oh, cotton wall. A lot of videos build a lot of different things with cotton. Why? Because cotton is really easy to set up and it's just really, really cheap. So uh, what kind of cotton should you get? Just get organic cotton balls. Google organic cotton balls and just buy that. Okay. A lot of people talking about like boiling it and drying it overnight and then I use it and blah, blah, blah. It's great or whatever. I personally think that just, you know, as long as it's clean straight out of the bag, you could twist them up and use them right away and it's not going to have a strange taste or anything like that. As opposed to if you just bought like regular, you know, Walgreens or CVS, like just regular brands that aren't organic, that might have like a slight strange taste to it. But uh, straight up organic ones are, you know, it, it's not going to be weird or anything like that. Okay, so basically that's all there is to it. Uh, these are all the, 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 the things that, that are mentioned that you're definitely going to need. All right, and we will move on to the build part of this video right now. Okay, so welcome to the build part of this video. Are you excited? You should be because you get to see me vape at the end of the video. Anyways, so <clears throat> before we get started, right, I just wanted to cover something real quick that I left out earlier at the beginning. Okay, we're going to talk about drip tips real quick. Okay, two seconds. Now, in my hands, I have three drip tips, okay? This is basically your standard drip tip that, you know, you've basically seen everywhere. That's not the important one. The important one is these two that are in my hand. You see, one of them has a huge wide bore, and then the other one is a thin one. Okay, well, the thin one is going to produce more uh, flavor, and the thick one is going to produce more vapor, okay? So it would be best that if you're going to be building a cloud machine, sure, you could go ahead and use regular drip tips, that's fine, but using a larger drip tip, okay, is going to produce even more clouds. And I'll show you the difference at the end of the video. Okay, so now let's get to it. <clears throat> so did you go ahead and uh, purchase everything that uh, we talked about? If you did, then you would have your own meter over here, and then you would have the magneto and the battery and the uh, screwdrivers that we talked about, large nail clipper, a little bit of cotton, a little bit of a butane torch, and then possibly a 28 gauge cantho. Okay, so let's begin. Uh, like I said before, it's really good to have an ohm meter because you get to you can you can use it uh, to hold the deck of the atomizer that you want to work with. Today I'm going to be using a uh, uh, Igo W4. 
Okay, the difference between the IGO W4 and the IGO regular is that like, you know, it's shaped a little more like a crown so that it's easier to pull off the top. As I said before, with the uh, cheaper drippers, okay, it is very important that you drill out the side holes. You see, these are not stock holes. These are larger than uh, what, what, what it normally came with. Uh, I drilled these to uh, uh, 3 32nd. It could be larger. It could be slightly smaller. Either way, it'll have, you know, more of the effect that, like, as long as you open up, as long as you're porting open the holes, it's going to produce more vapor. All right, so <clears throat> we have the deck over here. Simple three-prong setup, okay? So we're going to go ahead and build some microcoils, and then we're going to thread some cotton in it, and it's going to produce the kick-ass vapor, okay? So 28-gauge canthal over here that, you know, you go ahead and you purchase from eBay or whatnot. And uh, I'm just going to pull out some, and I'm going to use a generous portion just for the sake of the tutorial, okay? Usually I don't cut this much. <clears throat> so... Remember what we were talking about with the uh, screwdrivers? Okay, I recommend that you use the uh, the Phillips head zero screwdriver. Okay, it says over here one zero one point four to blah blah blah. Okay, use the zero one. So we're going to do that, and then we're going to take a little bit of the twenty eight gauge canthal, and then we're going to do a couple of wraps. So depending on the different kinds of sizes of the deck that you have, you could do more or less wraps. It's really up to you. Six, seven, eight, whatever. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and do a seven wrap. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. <clears throat> and then I push this in. All right. Now, what I want to do is... Uh, you should have some pliers lying around, whether it's a plier, a multi-tool, anything. So you want to take this and then give it a little tug so that it's nice and tight. Okay. <clears throat> uh, my screwdriver set came with tweezers, but you should always have some BS tweezers laying around. Right? You want to use very cheap tweezers because um, if, for instance, look, I'll show you. Normally with microcoils, you need to pinch this and then take your butane lighter and then torch it so that it gets bright red hot and then, you know, it'll hold form, which is exactly what I'm doing right now. Okay, it's harder to do on camera. But as you see, I'm doing this, okay? With cheap-ass tweezers, all right, the tweezers get hot so that the coils get hot so that everything could get bright red hot. Had I used like regular pliers and then, you know, did the micro coils together, the, the pliers are so thick that it works as if like, like a heat sink that it takes a long time for these pliers to get hot so that the coils can get hot. So it's better to use the cheap stuff that, so that they all get hot together. And then <clears throat> I need a place to put this thing. So I just use my case over here. Leave it so. All right, so let's get another piece of canthal so that we could do dual coils, and then it'll be for the other side. Okay. So, okay, so I got my canthal over here. Pull this out, <clears throat> and then seven wraps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, very quickly. Push this together. All right, and then I take my pliers with the leads over here. Give it a little pull. Give it a little pull so it's nice and tight. Push this back in. Okay. <clears throat> then, again, I'm going to get the cheap tweezers and then press this together. Okay, I'll just press together like so. Torch it. Once it starts glowing red, you can stop and then hold it for a little while. Let it cool. All right, that's really all there is to it. So now we have our two coils over here and we're going to go ahead and thread them into the deck of, uh, of our atomizer. Okay, so usually to do this, you want to make, put the microcoil that you just built back into the, uh, the screwdriver that you are using. And then <clears throat> bring this out and then lift up the screws over here so that we can start threading. 
Okay, so okay, so we have one side, and then we're going to take the other micro coil, and then do the other side. Okay. Again, this is just for tutorial reasons. I normally do not do leads this ridiculously long. Whoops. Now, what we want to do is that we want to make sure that the coils, they're not too far off to the edge, and they're not too close to the post either. Okay, so once you have them leveled out right about the distance that, you know, not too close, not too far away, you want to slightly tighten down just the positive post in the middle. Okay, uh, once you feel it begin to tighten, stop. Okay, you don't want to over torque these things because if you do, you will cut the leads by accident and then they'll just fall right out. So after that's done, I'm going to put in a screwdriver like this so that it can hold its form. And then I'm going to tighten this one down. Okay, once this thing is tightened, as long as it's tightened properly, it's not overly done, you can go ahead and then give this thing a spin and then it'll just come off really easily. You won't need like nail clippers or anything like that. You could use the nail clippers if you're in a rush, but <clears throat> you don't really need to. If you have, you know, long leads and it's easy to work with. So same thing over here, adjust my distance and then just give it a slight tighten, it's good enough. And then this thing, give it a spin, comes off very easily. All right, now, the center over here, tighten it so that it's just enough that when we spin this, this will come off. So there we go. Now I've done both sides. Okay. Tighten this down and then see what the ohms are clocking in. 0 0.9594. Oh, let me flip it the other way and show you guys real quick. Okay, nine three. Alright. So after the micro coils are set up onto the deck, okay, we want to get our mechanical device and then put in our battery. Um, it's not necessary, but it's just a good habit to keep your positive up top. Tighten this down, this down. Okay. Okay. Now we we'll give it a couple of pulses, and then we hold it down. All right now you see that it's lit up for the first time, so it's a little uneven. So we're going to give it a few pinches. It's just like building any micro coil video. One side is lighting up faster than the other, so something's imbalanced. I see, I see what the issue is. 
need to tighten down this end a little more. See how they're going at the same time now? Okay, once they start going evenly at the same time, we're now ready to thread the cotton. All right, now, this is how I thread the cotton differently. Okay, so I have a basic cotton ball in my hands over here, right? So let's just say we unravel the cotton ball. Okay, if we completely unravel the cotton ball, it's kind of like a carpet like this, right? Okay, so instead of measuring different uh, sizes of, you know, like it should be this much, it should be that much, I've seen it done with calipers and things. Instead, what I would like to do is just rip this thing directly in half. Okay, and then we take either one of the halves and then do another half. So basically, again, we have quarter strips, right? So now we don't have to measure anything. It's just quarter strips of a cotton ball. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and thread this through like so. And then I'm going to take the other one, you know, twist up whichever side. and then thread it through as well. Okay, so usually people just clip both ends from this point on. I like to do something a little more creative, a little more, a uh, little more neat. So I'll show you what I'm going to do right here. This is my Pisces setup. I have another video specifically on this as well in my channel, but I'll just do this one as quickly as possible. So I take this one and I swing it underneath the coil, and then I use a flathead screwdriver to tuck it in here and here. Okay, so and then whatever is stuck out the outside, I clip off directly to the length of the deck. Then whatever leads, well, cotton leads that are, are here, okay, I tuck in between the two posts so that they touch the opposite coil. And I do this for this side as well. Okay. So there you go. That's my Pisces setup. Okay. <clears throat> now, here we're going to get to the fun part. I'm going to take a little bit of juice, and then we're going to saturate the wick, all right? Wick is nice and wet. <clears throat> and then you could go ahead and give it a little test fire from here. All right, now I'm going to put the cap back on, and I'm going to show you something interesting. I have two drip tips. I have a normal drip tip over here, and then I have the large drip tip over here, okay? So we're going to vape on this thing. Here we go. I'm going to do the normal drip tip first, okay? And then... Okay, and now we're going to do the larger drip tip, okay? Slight difference, little difference, notice it? Okay, the point is this, right? Things are opened like a straw. It's like, you know, uh, making a car go faster, 
right? You can't just like get a bigger intake and then you don't get a bigger exhaust. It's the same, exact same thing. You open up the holes at the bottom over here, but you don't open up the holes at the top. That makes zero sense. So a larger bore drip tip, larger bore at the bottom, you know what I mean? Larger coils, larger uh, wick, you know, you put in your favorite juice, preferably uh, VG only juice so that produces even more vapor, you're going to get those huge clouds, okay? So I'll just show you guys one more time and then, we, you know, we'll wrap this up. Okay, so that's basically all there is to cloud chasing. Hope that's been helpful. Take care.